Now, despite the rain, it really is kind of lovely out here. Okay, so to whom does the world belong according to Locke? Well, he has kind of a, a, a weird answer. <laughs> but let, let's take it one step at a time. It, it, you know, it, remember what Locke's doing in the state of nature. If one person has a right, everybody has that right. Okay, so what if nobody has the right to the world? Well, we'd all be dead. Right? I wouldn't be able to build a shelter. I'd, uh, you know, <laughs> die very quickly um, from exposure. I just have to, you know, hopefully get along without food or water or shelter and make the best of it. No, no, right. So it, it can't be the case that nobody has a right to the world. And uh, it, and for Locke, if one person has the right, everybody has the right. There is no most important person for Locke. There is no most important person for Locke. So if, uh, if one person has a right to the world, and somebody's going to need it if we're going to survive, well, then everybody has a right to the world. Now, the way he says it is, you know, the world belongs to everyone. Okay, I mean, maybe we're going to, maybe we're not familiar with how Locke is using the phrase. Maybe he's not using the best phrase. But I think what he means here is that everyone has a right to the world. Everyone can go out and acquire what they need to live their life as they, as they see fit. Now, that's not without restriction. That's not without restriction, right? It's just not, well, just do whatever you want, right? Just try, they can destroy the property. No, and he's, he's not saying that. Now, he's saying uh, you can acquire possessions. Yeah, you can acquire possessions. And you acquire possessions through labor, by working on it, right? So you, if I want a shelter for the rain, I build it. If I want some food, I go out and grow it, or I catch it, or I you know, pick it off the trees, you know, the ground, whatever. If I want the food, I, I, I go out and get it through my labor. Now, may, yeah, maybe think about this as opposed to somebody has to give it to me. Uh, that, that's not what he's saying, right? Nobody owes their life to somebody else. I mean, you can if you want to. If you want to give food away, okay, that's fine. <clears throat> but nobody owes another person's existence to that person. Right? I don't have to work for somebody else. Everyone is a sovereign over their own lives, right? So I can work for my possessions. Great. Now, the, the kind of restriction there is uh, you, you can work for what you want. Okay, that's fine. You acquire what you want through labor. But that doesn't mean that you can just amass whatever possessions you want uh, and let it go to waste. Or you can't just destroy things. Now, you might wonder, it's like, well, why, why is that right? If I work for it, it's mine. Well, Locke's saying, yeah, but you know, everyone has a right to the world. If you work for something and simply let it go to waste, let it you know destroy it, let it spoil, right? You are destroying that to which somebody else has a right. right? I can go collect all the apples and eat three and let the rest spoil, but but now I'm destroying what somebody else had a right to. Right. So you can you acquire possessions, right? As part of your rights, you acquire possessions through labor by working at it. You working at it, not so about nobody owes, owes it to you, right? Uh, and something similar works for land. If you want land, that's fine. You can go out and acquire land. You work on it. Right? But he's got two conditions, right? There's no such thing as land spoiling. <laughs> not really. Um, you know, land doesn't go to, you know, doesn't rot. <laughs> um, so when you acquire land, you can acquire as much. Yeah, you, you can acquire land all you want, but you have to leave as much for others, right? So uh, say there's a thousand acres out there, but I really just need 10 to work on. Well, I go out and, you know, acquire my 10. I work on my 10. You can tell I'm not a farmer. I think a lot of people who work on land like 10 acres ain't going to do a lot for you, buddy. <laughs> I go out and get my 10 acres, right? Uh, but I have to leave the rest of the 9,000, uh, uh, that's a thousand or 990 acres for everyone else, right? It's up to them to go out and work on their land. But I got to this one. This is mine. I worked on it. Now, suppose what you're doing with the land is you're growing apples. And suppose that, you know, you just really love growing apples. It's an amazing thing for you. And I've got to take all 1,000 acres for growing apples. Like, okay. You, you actually can do that. If you want to take all the 1,000 acres and grow those apples, you can. If you don't leave as much, you have to leave as good. So what he's saying there is, look, if you're going to take all the land, all for yourself, whatever goods you produce off it that you don't need, that you're not using for your survival, right? all of that, you have to give to everybody else. Okay? That's what he means by as much or as good. 
as much or as good. If you don't leave, you know, if you don't give them as, as good, you got to leave as much. If you don't leave as much, you got to leave as good. So you can, you can take land, sure, but you have to leave as much or as good for everybody else. And again, because we all have a right to the world. This belongs to everybody. So you can acquire possessions, great. Don't let it spoil, because other people have a right to those possessions too. Uh, you can acquire land, great, but you have to leave as much or as good for other people. We are all authority over our own lives, and everyone has that right.